Yo guys, before I get into the video, I'll just briefly mention that I've opened up coaching. If you're interested, there's a link in the description for it. And this game here is in low master MMR against Syndra. I go Conqueror with Triple Haste and Ignite, uh, Axiom, Profane, Scrudge, this uh, build that I really like a lot. And yeah, against Syndra, it's a mage, so you know the game plan is the same, just waiting for level 6 or level 7 and after first recall so that we can do a lot of damage. But let's see how this game went. So level 1 against Syndra is a classic Zed versus Mage matchup where you don't want to hit the minions, you just wait and... Right now he's kind of trolling. I think he should walk up and try to poke me or Q me before my minions get low. And then he can Q my minions after, but he missed his first Q opportunity. So he uses his Q on the wave and that means I can walk up and get that CS as well. Just playing around his cooldowns a bit there to get the extra CS. Um, and then right here I'm standing a bit further back because I know that I don't need to walk up for the CS. I'm just going to try and dodge his Q. The central Q range is something to be very wary of because it's quite long. And, you know, like right here he can probably QE me, but he doesn't. But yeah, the rage is quite long, it's a little bit more than mid-range. So if you think of mid-range as like a Vladimir Q range, um, it's probably like 1.5 times that. So it's quite a lot of range. So just be nice and wary of that as you play. And then right here, I kind of want to shave the wave a bit more before he crashes it. But I don't want to take too much poke. So I just use a W, hoping that he would use Q, but he used it a bit late. But I dodged his Q, and I'm able to kill three or four minions, which is actually quite good, because the crash is already going to be um, pretty heavy. But, you know, when the wave gets stuck like that, and they're able to stack three waves against you, you kind of just want to do your best to shave it as much as you can, so that when your wave comes along right here, there's not too many minions under the tower. So there's about four or five minions. And the next wave of three minions, or the three melee minions in the next wave, don't walk under your tower. That's the main thing that you want, because if they do walk under your tower, then it gets a lot harder. And right now, they kind of do go under my tower, but it's too late, because Syndra's already pushing the wave, and it's not a big deal. And then now I get level 4, I hit my Qs, I'm thinking about going in. And the thing to do against Syndra is when you go in, make sure you walk instead of just autoing. So right there, we kill him, but we... We went in the W, we auto E, and then we start walking immediately. Mainly because when you're right on top of her, you can use your movement to try and just maneuver. It's harder for her to hit a Q and her E on you simultaneously. So that's the reason for that. We get the kill, we get the push, we get the ward, and he has teleport. So we also get a good recall while having ignite uh, as my bot lane dies, which is fine. But yeah, with the 1050 gold, I'm thinking about what to buy. I realized that... Um, I could go double longsword and boots, but I'm going Axiom Rush, so I can't have three longswords. It will delay my item, so we just go pickaxe and a um, red trinket. But it's very good to go boots against Syndra on first recall if you can. I probably could have just gone boots and extra longsword just to be l less like uh, greedy, but it's really up to you. And yeah, that was basically the first few minutes against Syndra. Right here, I'm going to show you guys the importance of patience. So, he has a, like about 480 HP when I went in. And I know that I wouldn't kill him without using WE and then two Qs and also two auto attacks. So, we use our W combo like that and we don't try to greed. We don't flash yet. Just waiting for the opportunity. And right here, my W is coming back up. So, I know that he probably won't react to my flash. Especially when he goes to CS, I go in. So, when you want to W flash onto someone... Wait for your CS to be close to dying, and you know, if you think that they're going to go for your CS, then there's like a window where they're mentally somewhere else, I guess, thinking about the CS. So you can just quickly WQW flash, and then right here I protect my Jarvan as we run away. I end up being able to poke Syndra a bunch and get Pryo, so just going to push this wave in together, use my W on the Syndra, and then Lulu shows up, but then I'm like YOLO, and I go in... <laughs> Um, I tried to ult on the Lulu W. I don't know if I actually did or if that's even possible, but I think I did looking at the animations. So when you go under the tower to dive someone after taking your W, you should auto E and use ignite or just take tower aggro and wait just a little second and then ult usually on the tower shot. But if there's a Lulu there, then you should just ult when you see the little uh, W, although I guess it's hard to do it by reaction, which is not what I did. So yeah, I just tried to predict it and then ult and it works out <laughs> but yeah 
mainly when you go to dive and you take a W2, you should, you know, take tower aggro or just wait like an extra little half a second or second and then ult as well after. Just uh, feels a lot easier. So right now we see Karkzix is taking the grubs and I have push on mid. Kogmo is moving up as well, so it's very confirmed that we are going to fight the grubs. So I'm just trying to make sure I push and I don't need to rush because Kogmo is here as well, basically. We have the numbers advantage. I just go straight on this Lulu because the Karzix <laughs> hits the plot and I get the kill. Um, it's good to not waste ult when you don't have to. So we just WQW and kill him real quick. So Kogmo comes mid and we push together. But they're on the dragon so we move over. And as I'm walking to this fight, I'm thinking about how to use my flash. You don't want to use it too quickly or, you know, rush too much. So I just go in right here on the Twitch. And I don't flash on the Karzix even though I could flash ult straight away. Because we wait out his flash and just wait out their cooldowns. So, and then right at the end we use a flash to kill the Lulu. But the main thing is, you know, you want to hold your flash um, until as late as possible because it's more likely for the enemies to use their spells like flash or dash uh, before you use your flash if you wait, basically. You don't want to flash ult someone and then they just do a flash away and you don't get the kill, so it's something to keep in mind. Something I forgot to mention is that I go Edge of Night 3rd um, and it's pretty good against Syndra, especially because her range is slightly high or a bit high. And mages are really strong in terms of bursting uh, in the mid game after one to two items. So we just do that to mitigate. And then right here I use my W but I know I can take it because I have a lot of cooldown reduction already. And then we ult and we use Q's auto E and then we hold a W just for Hozonias. But yeah as I was saying Edge of Night is pretty good against Syndra because she can actually come back into the game. Even if you win against her in lane because her spells are really strong. You know she can Q E. Uh, from quite far away and one shot you if you don't have any health items so edge of night is just a perfect one which you know defends you from both the spell and you know you have hp and then right here we just go in we get a bunch of kills for free <laughs> uh, just flash on the twitch yeah we just ran from bot lane all the way up there and just get the triple kill right here we're going to play for the baron and I want to show you guys where to like stand as you want to go in and sweep. So we don't walk forwards into the river, we go straight into the bush. And that helps a lot because if someone is in the bush over there that Karzix was in, they wouldn't actually see you I think. So doing that is better and then sweeping as you go down. Um, so we get a pick and then we get the Baron by forwarding a bunch. Okay, Sante gets to the top tower. But it's fine, we get the Baron. And then he comes out of nowhere and I'm like, ah, this is really bad. But I just ult, use my E to get my W back. And then Karzix flashes, so I take my shadow and then I go in. I combo the Kaysante, but then there was a Twitch as well. I don't think I would have killed Twitch if I focused him, so it's completely fine. I did a bunch of damage before I died, which is the main thing. You know, when you're in a sticky situation, just try to get your spells out as much as you can. And I think my team kind of loses, but it's fine. Oh, well, I mean, it's not the worst. Let's watch, I guess. Go on, Kogmo. He started recalling. But yeah, my team wins. Easy. Right now, I'm walking down mid lane because I'm pretty sure that Kogmo is going to get engaged on by the Twitch. Because, you know, Nara is away, Jarvan is away. And then I realize that my Edge of Night is up, so I can ult straight onto Twitch and then use my W to get away. Um, because the Lulu ult is going to hit the Edge of Night most times. Um, I think I die as I go in. I take the W and I die. But either way. Um, the Lulu ult will always hit Edge of Night. If you ult someone, it's like very, very likely because, you know, they try to ult them straight away. And the likelihood of it being the first spell that hits you, you know, it's pretty high. So when you have Edge of Night, it helps a lot against Lulu ult as well. And we're able to use that and survive. But I mean, we W'd in to die, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I forward it a bunch, I think my team wins. Can win the fight. And then they end the game so yeah thank you very much for watching this video i hope that it was something useful in this one and i'll see you in the next one peace